Hi there, I'm Tim Allen and I'm working with Wise Moves and your local library has asked us if we can show you how you can make some simple stop motion animation over the festive holidays. Now, um, you're in luck because I am a stop motion animator and I've been animating for over 20 years now. I've done such films as Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, uh, Shaun the Sheep, Fireman Sam, Postman Pat, and this t-shirt here, if you can see that, is from uh, the, um, this is the animation crew from Isle of Dogs. Um, now, this first video I wanted to talk to you about which software you can use, which equipment you can use, and talk you through some of the basics to get you started. Now, we're going to be working with some software called Cloud Stop Motion which is it's, um, available on iPhone, on Android, on PC and on Mac, on pretty much any device that takes the internet. And the reason is it's not an app, it actually works through your internet browser. So whether you're using a laptop or your mobile phone, you literally call up the internet browser and it will come straight up and you can that will then access the device's camera. So this way I can show you something which not only is it very easy to use, but it can work on any device, and the it's free. So not a bad combination. Um, now, uh, you can use the device on your camera, uh, on your phone, like the phone camera here. I'm, for this example, I'm going to be using a webcam, and the webcam, as you can see here, is held on a, I've got a, a large tripod here. Um, you can use most webcams. Uh, I'm using this one because I particularly like the video quality. And the one that I've gone for is, this is a Logitech C920. That's a, a Logitech C920. And the reason I've gone for this, as I mentioned, I like the quality, but it's got the advantage that it can be plugged into my laptop by USB. Uh, I can turn off all the automatic lighting um, and color control, should I want to. And the, another reason I'm very prone to this one is that it's got what we call a camera mount. So if you can see here, it's the actual screw hole. That's my. Um, that's so I can attach it to a tripod. And you can see here I've attached it to a large tripod to hold it up. But you could also go for this is a this is a bendy tripod, also known as um, uh, an octopod or a gorilla pod. And this can screw fairly simply into the top of the tripod, like so. If I can get it nice and firmly in, yes, it's getting there eventually. There we go. So this is one way that I can actually hold my webcam up. Here we are, and that can stand neatly like that. Or, failing that, there's other methods. I need to undo it for this though. Uh, the other method is that I can simply put it directly, directly onto a laptop. So here's my laptop screen, and the beauty with this webcam is, and all webcams should do something similar, you can just mount it onto the top of your tripod like that. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'll be using a webcam. You don't need to, if you, have a, if you purely want to use your mobile phone, um, or the, the camera on your laptop, that's also fine. A um, couple of methods that might work. If you're thinking of using your mobile phone, well, here's my mobile. You can buy things like this. This is a mobile phone holder, and they're very cheap. They can be got for normally just a few pounds. This will quite easily slot and grip my, my phone, and in the same way, that can then simply screw on to the tripod in very much the same method. And that's a way of making my phone or my iPad into, or my tablet, into quite a simple device. In the same way that we're using a webcam on a tripod here, I can do exactly the same thing with my mobile phone, as you can see here. Now, of course, you can just use your device, your mobile phone, your tablet, your laptop, and use the camera that's built into it. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, the problem you might have is that if you are using your mobile phone, um, by trying to hold it to take animation, it's going to keep moving. And every time you push the button to capture a frame, you're going to find that 
when you're pushing it, the whole thing moves, so the camera moves as well. And if every frame the camera is moving, it's going to look like your scene is an earthquake. So trying to keep this still is fairly important. Now, one, so one problem you're going to find is how to hold your phone up. And a really, really simple solution would be something like this. I'm using just using blue tack, which I've squeezed around the bottom of the phone. And that's, this is a, a very simple solution. And it does kind of hold my phone up. The, prob um, the problem is that if, when I'm controlling the software, I'm going to use the touch screen to actually push the buttons. And every time I push the screen, I am, in fact, shaking the whole phone. So again, the camera's going to move. So it's not the most stable option. Uh, and also, a big warning, if you're thinking of using blue tag, do make sure you're not doing it on the carpet, because um, <laughs> any adults in the room are not going to appreciate it if they're trying to pick blue tag out after the carpet afterwards. Um, so another method I found, um, I'm trying to use objects that are fairly simple to get hold of. This is fairly simple, a cup. I found putting my mobile phone in the cup was relatively stable. My, I can push the buttons on my phone and the phone doesn't move too much. Of course the cup can move, but then for example I can choose a table and perhaps put blue tack around the, the base of my cup to hold the cup still and then when I'm pushing buttons on the phone I can the, the cup will hold the phone pretty, in a pretty sturdy way. Okay, so we've had a little look at cameras and which cameras you can use in a way of trying to hold your device still. Uh, another thing you need to think about is the lights. Now, if you're in a room where there's lots of daylight, um, like your conservatory for example, or shooting outdoors, you're going to find that the sun has a rather nasty habit of moving all the time, or if we're going to be exact about it, the Earth has a habit of moving around the sun. So what that tends to mean is that the light keeps changing, especially when clouds go in front of the, the sun. So if you think that your camera is going to be taking one image, and then a few seconds later another image, and then ten seconds later you'll take another image, over time, if the clouds keep passing over the sun, or the sun keeps moving, what you're going to see is that the lighting for your animation keeps changing. And when that's played back very fast, it will have this flashing effect, which will be very, very distracting. And um, in the industry, we call it flicker, when the light keeps changing. So what you want is an environment where the light stays as similar as possible. Now, I'm shooting indoors. I've got my household lights on. I've even closed the blind so that no light can come in. And that way, hopefully, the light will stay fairly consistent. Um, so effectively, I'm trying to have a controlled environment where the camera stays still and the lights stay still and then I can start making my animation. So with that in mind we're going to open cloud stop motion and try some animation. Here we go. Okay to get cloud stop motion up and running you'll need to open your browser and open a fresh tab. It shouldn't matter which internet browser you use but uh, you will need to be connected to the internet and I'm going to go to cloudstopmotion.com here we go. And the first screen you'll see is this, inviting you to go straight ahead to go and start um, making your film. It's exactly the same on a mobile phone or any other device, so long as you're using the internet browser. Now I've logged in already. What you will need to do is log in. And I've logged in already on this window. And as you'll see, the first thing you'll see is terms and conditions. And of course, the chance to start a new project. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and immediately it's come straight up into the animation window, chosen my webcam. You may find that you need to select your camera because your laptop or your mobile may have more than one camera. If it's looking at the wrong one, you can go into the camera options and tucked away in the settings here is the chance to choose your camera. So choose the one that's appropriate. I'm using my Logitech Pro Webcam C920. Right, so now that I've got the correct image, I'm going to go back away from settings and back into capture frames. And you can see this is the live image of what I'm going to shoot on the table. And my plan for this animation is to shoot this fellow here. It's a little 
snow globe, although admittedly without the snow. And well, I'd like to show a few things um, around. This would be my button here for taking frames. As you can see, it says take frames from my Logitech webcam. Uh, down here is the timeline. And this, this image with the camera in shows the live image. As you can see, this is what we call a live image. Now, I don't want to start with my character in shot, so I'm going to take him out. And by clicking on the camera button, I'm going to be taking one frame. Now you should see that image appears down here. There you go, took a moment, but there it is. And so this is the still, uh, the last frame that I took, the last still. And you can't see my hand. If I go to the live image, you can see my hand now. And what I can do is I can flick with the left and right arrow keys between the last image and indeed the live image, which is my hand. In fact, it looks like I've accidentally taken a photo of my hand, which I don't want. So I imagine that by pushing the delete button, yes, that's that. So by pushing the delete button twice, that got rid of the last frame of my hand. So if you accidentally can't take a frame of your hand, I would put the red square around the frame and then push the delete button and it will get rid of it. Let's try that again. There we go. Delete twice and it deleted the frame I didn't want. Anyway, I do want a frame where you can see the background before my character comes in. So let's capture a frame. It takes a moment for it to appear. There we go. I'm now going to capture another frame. There it is. And I'm ready for my character to start coming in. Mr. Snow Globe is going to start zooming in. I'm going to have him halfway into frame to begin with. And then I'm going to move him that little bit further. As you can see, it takes a moment for the screen, the image to appear. There it is. It's a slight delay sometimes. That took a few seconds for it to appear, but it did indeed come. Okay, he's now, I've moved him forwards. I'll take another frame. This is the bit in animation where you're moving things, as they say, just a tiny amount. And of course, the larger the movements you take, the faster your character moves. If you make very small movements, then he'll move much more slowly. And once again, I'm going to use the left and right arrow keys to go through through the animation frame by frame. So there you go, you can see it whizzing through, followed by the live image. Left and right arrow keys to see the snow globe frame by frame, and then live, the one that I'm about to take next. Right, I'm now at the stage where I'm going to want him to finish his skid in and kind of um, he's going to come to a big break of a stop so his inertia is going to push him and rotate him more this way and to do that I'm going to need to pop something underneath him and I'm going to actually use a blob of blue tag now I'm going to put it behind him so you can't see it but effectively I'm doing something like that but I'm actually going to do it so that I put the blob of blue tag behind him so you shouldn't really be able to see his movement Again, using the left and right arrow keys, and I can check how far he's moved. And note there, can you see my shadow is in shot? That's because I'm leaning in. So before I take the frame, I want to make sure that I lean out, otherwise you'll see my shadow when I take the frame. And this time I want him to skid just a little bit. The inertia, the momentum is making him go a little bit further. So I'm going to put a bit more blue tack to lean him just that bit more. It's one of those things where it's quite hard when you're watching someone else animate to work out what they're doing. But all will make sense in a moment. There we go. So effectively, I'm going to ro I'm rocking him from one side to another. And each time, I'm basically putting blue tack underneath him, but I'm doing it behind him. So you can't actually see the blue tack to the camera. And this will be the very last tilt that I do. So I'm trying to make this tilt a little bit smaller than the previous ones. Now let's push the play button and see it all coming together. There we go, you can see a quite a silly skin into place. And you don't see the blue tack either. Okay, now just for fun, I'm going to make one more adjustment. And uh, if I click on the T here, you can add things. You can see titles, credits, chapter headings, overlays. And I'm going to go for a speech bubble. And there you go, and as you can see, it automatically appears in front of you. 
my um, solo. Um, and I'm going to, it's a bit big for me, so I'm going to grab this um, corner here and make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And he's saying hello. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to come down to the timeline here at the bottom where we can see the frames I've taken so far. And this is the hello speech bubble I've just added. I can, of course, use the left and right arrow keys to go back through my animation. And you can see that the hello speech bubble appears when I get the, uh, you know, this yellow bar here. So that's what I want. I want my skidding to come to a stop and then the word hello to appear. And we're still live, so I'm going to need to take a few more frames to um, keep the snow globe there while the hello button appears. So let's take a few now. I'm going to go back to the camera icon. And I'll capture about eight frames would be a nice amount to see the snow globe standing there with the hello speech bubble. Okay, so that's probably the right number of frames that I want. And um, what we can see is if we look at the timeline at the bottom, is that my speech mark, my speech bubble, is further than my animation. So I don't need to have the hello without a picture of the animation. So what I'm actually going to do is drag the end of this. If I click onto the yellow bar where the speech bubble is, there we go, I just drag it in like so. And now I can see that the speech bubble finishes at the same time as my animation. Right, let's push play and see how that all looks together. Here he comes, and hello. And in he comes again, hello. Lovely, all looking good. Now I want to make myself a video file that I can put on social media or keep this version. So I'm going to go to here where it says export your film to an MPEG-4 file. And you'll see I've got the option to change the name if I want. And I'll push start export. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to render. You'll see it renders every frame. And once it's finished rendering, it's then going to start encoding, which means it takes the rendered video and makes the MPEG-4 video file. And it's effectively the most universally playable format of video and perfect for social media. You'll also see a little reminder down here saying, please don't close the browser. Yes, if you close the browser, you'll interrupt the rendering process and you have to start it again. But don't worry, none of your works can get lost. It's all stored on the cloud. So should the worst happen and your browser crash, then you can always reopen the software and your project will be saved there, safe and sound. Okay, and once your export's complete, you'll see a screen looking like this and giving you the option to download it. This should download it straight into your download folder and it should automatically open with whichever is your default player for MPEG-4 videos. Here we come, whiz whiz whiz, and hello, whiz whiz whiz. Hello, whiz whiz whiz, hello. <laughs> so there you go, making your own animation from home using whatever device, using cloud stop motion. Okay, I'm Tim Allen, working with Wise Moves, wishing you lots of festive fun and happy animating.